Welcome to this video presentation on the differences between discrete and continuous signals. Um, in this presentation I'm just going to use plots to try and describe the differences. Um, there's one key difference which hopefully will be clear by the end of the presentation. Um, so in this presentation we're just going to use a, an example whereby we're measuring the temperature of an, an oven. So here is the oven and we'll plot the temperature of the oven as it varies over time. So we have the temperature and we have time. And let's sketch in a few markers. Let's imagine we have um, three, six. Okay, so let's say that represents 20 minutes, 40, uh, 60, 80, 100, 120, and 140. Okay, so this is time in minutes. And along this axis we have temperature, so it starts off at zero and might go up to 200. So there's 100, uh, 50 and 150. Okay, so let's plot how the temperature of the oven varies over time. Um, so let's assume it starts around 25 degrees and after about 10 minutes or so, somebody turns on the oven, so it starts to heat up. And it heats up, heats up, heats up, until it reaches um, the desired temperature. So that looks like it's about 180 degrees. Then after a certain amount of time, somebody opens the oven, and the temperature of the oven will drop. And then go back up again once the, the door is closed. And then after another period of time, somebody turns the oven off, the temperature will drop, like so back down to room temperature eventually. So what I have here, this red line, is a fairly accurate representation of how the temperature of the oven changes. Okay. Now I would consider this red line here to be a continuous plot of the temperature of the oven. And by that I mean that the, the temperature of the oven, I can determine the temperature of the oven for any point in time. So if somebody said to me, well, what's the temperature after 20 minutes? I could go along to the 20 minutes, come across over here, and I'd see that it was roughly 60 uh, degrees Celsius. Now, if I had an accurate plot, I'd be able to determine exactly the temperature of the oven. Okay. Uh, equally, if somebody said to me, well, what's the temperature of the oven at after 41.325 minutes? I could come along, go to where 41.325 is on my time axis, bring a vertical line up, find where it intersects the plot, bring a line across, and determine that the temperature was roughly about 157.6. Um, degrees Celsius. So, of course, the accuracy of my measurements is going to be dependent upon the graph. But the theory is, for any time instant, I can determine the temperature of the oven. Now that's using it uh, a continuous signal. Okay. So with the continuous signal, I can determine the temperature for any point in time. And that's the key thing about a uh, continuous signal. But let's take a look at a continuous signal, or a discrete signal. Now we know from the earlier presentations on discrete signals that discrete signals, first of all, are just a sequence of numbers, but those sequence of numbers represent the variation of some quantity. But we've only measured at discrete points in time. So let's imagine, for example, that the temperature of the oven was measured every 20 minutes. So I'm just going to overlay my discrete signal 
on the continuous signal. So my first measurement at time t equal to zero. Second measurement after 10 minutes. So I'm going to make my measurements every 10 minutes. So these orange dots here represent my discrete signal. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm missing. So every 10 minutes I'm going to measure that signal. And all I would have are these All I would have are these green dots to tell me what the signal looked like. And I would have no other information. Okay, so my discrete signal is just, I only have a discrete number of samples. I don't have all the information about the signal. So if somebody came along to me and asked me, well, what was the temperature of the oven after 10 minutes? Now because I've measured after 10 minutes, I can tell them. I can come along to my sample, go up 10 minutes because I have measured at that value, and I can determine, okay, the temperature of the oven was about 40 degrees. But if somebody said to me, well, what's the temperature at 10.001 minutes? I can't tell them because I don't have the measurement of the temperature of the oven at that time. I only have it at 10 minutes. Now I could make a guess, for example, because I know the next sample, I have a, a higher measurement, I could say, well, instead of being 40 degrees, it's a little bit greater, but I couldn't be given accurate uh, determination of the temperature of the oven. And that's the key difference between discrete versus continuous signals. You can almost think of a, a discrete signal as being a subset of a continuous signal, where you've lost certain information. Now, you might say, well, why bother with discrete signals then? What's the point of them? And the reason is we need them is because we cannot store all information about a signal on a computer, for example. If I wanted to accurately store all the information about the temperature of the oven over even this, what, just over two hour period, I would need an infinite amount of memory to store that information. But when I'm dealing with discrete signals, I've discounted a lot of that information. So I'm only, I'm only storing a subset of the information. Uh, but that subset, we make sure when we're capturing the data that we capture it in such a way that we have enough data to accurately represent the signal to um, the degree of certainty that we need. So hopefully that will shed some light on discrete and continuous signals. I know it's a fairly difficult concept to get initially, uh, but maybe if you have a few discussions with yourself, uh, your, your colleagues and um, myself, well, uh, we can clarify these differences. Okay, thanks for your attention.